hopefully the, the computer will work. So first of all, thank you very much for the invitation and uh, it's a real honor and a, a great pleasure actually to be here as a partner for this, uh, for this event. Um, my name is Aldo Cervi, I'm responsible for uh, South Europe at Illumina and as I tell my American uh, colleagues, I have the territory with the beautiful weather and the fantastic food and the great economy. <laughs> so, happy, happy birthday. And, uh, you know, my question is, uh, you're almost a teenager now. And uh, for, we've, <laughs> we've, all, we've all been teenagers and... Uh, and actually, some of us have the unfortunate luck of having teenagers in our family, so good luck for the next 10 years. <laughs> and this comes from another teenager, because Illumina, just one slide to, to introduce a little bit who we are for those who don't know us. Well, we, we were born in 98, so we, we are also a, a teenager, maybe a global teenager now. Uh, we have about 2,000 employees, a revenue of just over $1 billion. And I'm really proud of one, one thing, that we um, reinvest $200 million, so uh, you know, 20% of our revenue into research and development. And the other thing I'm really proud of is a lot of this research and development is in Europe. It's near Cambridge. And it's, uh, it's rare these days, but I think it's something that we should all aspire to. So just to share with you, the presentation really, you know, I mean, amidst um, really distinguished scientists. So I, I just wanted to give you a flavor of a technology company like ours and the vision we have going forward. What we've done uh, since, since the inception. And, and really where we're going. So I see it as, I'm, I'm amazed sometimes by, the, by the, what the human race have done. And if you look back at 250 years of, of revolutions, uh, some of the technological revolutions starting maybe from the uh, 18th century, I lived many years in Manchester and this was still very real actually. So the, uh, the industrial revolution, uh, of where we, we turned from uh, manual labor to mechanical labor. And, and we know what effect that had. And about 200 years later, maybe after the Second World War, we started talking about the digital revolution. So trying to automize maybe some of our mental repetitive uh, jobs into, into something uh, that is astounding. You know, we know what effect the, the, the computer has had on us. And, um, and I see also a third revolution now that is what I call the biological revolution that I think we could, we could say probably started around 2003. Uh, and this is really driving uh, human health, but not only human health, and uh, personalized medicine and all of these uh, aspects. And I, and I think it's, um, you know, part of my presentation will be around that and how Illumina and our partners have developed that. So as I said, probably started with the first uh, draft of the human genome um, in 2003 that was truly one of the biggest projects that um, mankind had done in, in the 10 or 15 years before that. And this has, um, many saw it as the finishing line, but in reality now we all really understand that it was just the starting line for really exciting new projects that came and followed. And many of these projects uh, have seen a, uh, you know, CRG play a really important role. And I'm thinking about ENCODE and the group at CRG uh, working in, in the ENCODE project. So, it's obvious, okay? We, we are a product of our, of our genomes and we see it, or we don't see it. <laughs> we see it. Um, I'm not sure if I have to change something there. This is the competition, trying to cut me. So uh, we, we are the product of our genomes, it's visible, but what I'm, what I'm also, I think it's gone back to the slow mode. <laughs> I think it's better than to put it in the... I'll do it. 
exit because I have some, the problem is I have some. You're going to put it on the external one, like this, or? Should I turn like this? Let's try. I don't know what is the problem with this computer. Right? It's a bit slow. Can Should I try? Or? Wait a second. No second problem, I didn't know. Okay. It's going well. Okay. I'm going to go away this way. Yeah. We'll try. So what, what is obvious is also that is, is the incredible effect that our environment has on us as well. And you know, not only what, what, you know, where we eat, where, where we live, or whatever, but there are amazing advances also in, in things like metagenomics and the, the microbiome. So what is it outside, but also other organisms that are inside and have uh, an enormous effect. And, and a lot of this is obviously genetic. When we look at diseases, it's obvious from the more simple genetic diseases to infectious diseases to cancer. We know what percentage of cancers are actually you know, genetic. And more complex diseases. So this is very clear why studying genetics is <laughs> rather important, really. And Many, many companies, uh, you know, we, we heard from, uh, from our colleagues at Sanofi, but many companies make it a mission to improve human condition, okay? And this can be interpreted in many, many different ways. Uh, one thing that we, we are definitely passionate about is we see the future from going somewhere where you have a generic um, way of addressing uh, therapies to something that is genetic, so personalized. So understanding the individual patient and the individual uh, disease you have. So this is probably what is driving a lot of companies like Illumina. But you know, we have a tendency always of concentrating on what is human, okay? And a lot of the funding goes on that. But in reality, uh, Illumina, for example, we, we really look carefully at other opportunities, for example, in the forensic, in the biopharma, in the agriculture and veterinary, and all of these are amazing opportunities of growth. So, to go back to the Illumina mission, uh, without being too corporate, but just that we really believe that we can provide tools for the understanding of genetics and health. And really we see it from pure discovery and whole genome to something that is the validation, and why not, the diagnostic clinical approach going forward, and why not even further, prognostic and not just the diagnostic. And we just do this, there's no one technology that will work for everything. Okay, so the idea is that if you think of this workflow, uh, the technologies that we collaborate with CRG with, and uh, you know, the, the center, and, and we are fortunate that we have some of our instruments here, are exactly this. So when we're talking about general discovery, and so we're talking about a few samples, but a lot of information. Uh, the, the instrument that is next doors uh, is on next generation sequencing and sequencing by synthesis. So we talk about this technology. Once you do this, then you try and validate the results and using many, many samples to validate the results. And often you go into what are called microarrays or chip technology. Then this information can be passed on to what is really exciting now, that is targeting on just some targets, some genes of your interest, and this is where, for example, the clinical space and the diagnostic space is really moving. And there, it's essential to have technology, and we're developing technology that is accessible. Accessible in price, accessible in terms of know-how, in terms of removing the bottlenecks, because sample preparation and data analysis have maybe slowed the implementation of some of these technologies. So, for example, the MySeq is just a, uh, a benchtop um, solution that we just launched about a year ago. And of course, in the routine diagnostic labs, there are other technologies like real-time PCR that most of the labs here will have just to look at you know, smaller, uh, smaller targets. So, uh, I thought it would be maybe interesting with you to share what the community is using, for example, Illumina technology for. And this is just uh, some of the over 2,000 publications that 
some of the scientists have produced with our technology. And what I find interesting is not just about DNA sequencing. Okay, uh, the structural and the functional aspects uh, of of the studies are really important, and we see a very, very growth also on RNA sequencing. But this is the situation today. How do we see investments in the next two years? So this is an outside source uh, indicating where the money will be pumped into, into uh, in the field of genetic analysis in the next two years. And what we will see is really that next generation sequencing will represent probably around 50% of, uh, of the spend uh, by 2014. Okay, so we talked about the revolution of genetics, and you know, we all know these gentlemen, and I think we, they really shaped the world in the last uh, 10 years, and that's the parallel in time with the, with the CRG. Uh, what we need to put in context is the cost that the Human Genome Project had, not only in terms of time, so you know, more than 10 years, and possibly over $2 billion to discover you know, to, to, to really produce the, the first human uh, genome draft. It, it was a fantastic, fantastic achievement. Let's put it in context with the technology today, just 10 years on. To achieve this, centers had uh, many capillary electrophoresis, so a technology using Sanger sequencing. Uh, I was also UK manager, and, and we have distinguished uh, scientists from the Sanger Center. They had about 100 of these instruments about 500,000 uh, euros each. Now we launched some desktop devices and the instrument that is next door, the HiSIG 2000. Have you ever thought about the parallel of how many of one instrument or how many of the old technology you need to, you know, the parallel between the two technologies? I think the numbers are staggering. In 10 years, Having one instrument next doors is the equivalent of having 60,000 instruments, 60,000 instruments just 10 years ago in the big centers. And I find that really staggering in terms of technology. And what the other, the other aspect is that the continuous decrease in cost per data point is allowing fantastic research to happen. Because we couldn't go on with a $2.3 billion cost for a human genome, okay? And these are just some, uh, some indications with the Sanger sequencing back in 2002, 2003, per uh, megabase of, of DNA sequenced. We were talking about, let's say, around $5,000. With our desktop solutions that were launched uh, a year ago, uh, we're looking at uh, just over a dollar, two dollars, and with a large instrument you have next doors, we're looking at, uh, uh, I don't know, 100,000 times less or something is the cost. So that enables fantastic science to happen, and, and I'll just repeat the, the slide we, we saw before. So this was just a, a general thing. Some some people call us the apple of genomics, and I honestly, it, it does embarrass me quite a lot, and I just wish we were as good as, apples, uh, as Apple for many things. But there is one thing we do have in common, that is this passion for innovation, okay? We've seen it from some of the previous slides. But innovation alone brings you nowhere unless you have collaborations. And this is where, you know, that the reason why I'm here today is to uh, share with you that most of the things we do are through collaborations, okay? And the, last week we launched some uh, clinical panels in next generation sequencing. All of these have been done with uh, international collaborations. And, you know, Luis, I'm, I'm really hoping that in the years to come we can, you know, really collaborate on, on some, some more of these. There are other collaborations Illumina do, for example, again in next generation sequencing in HIV genotyping with uh, Siemens. This, I, I think, is fantastic. So this is a, our, our technology now is used for non-invasive testing of trisomies. So it means no more amniocentesis, no more velocentesis. You know, you get maternal blood and you can test for this. I think this is fantastic uh, and, and quite revolutionary. Of course, it's not just next generation sequencing, but it can be a race to study a, a, a number of things and infertility being one of them. 
So this is really the slide that is the most important, uh, last but not least, uh, is, is the collaboration we've had for, uh, for a few years now with CRG. We are uh, an international company, but really we're a small teenager company, um, you know, based in San Diego in, in a lot of things. And we really wanted to have European foothold and collaborate with some of the best centers. The initial collaboration we have started is really on making science available. So we organize a lot of seminars. Uh, we try and share information. We try and make sure that CRG has early access to new technology. And uh, what I really see is this is just a stepping stone. So as I was saying, Luis, uh, we, we spoke several times about translational medicine, about harnessing what we know in, in research and taking it also to the hospital bed. And I know you invited many hospitals as well. So uh, I just wanted to you know, really thank you. And, and I'm looking forward to, to driving the future of, of what I think is a fantastic field as well. So thank you.